Hey everybody, how's it going? B Temple here again, and uh, finally coming back today with uh, the second part of our French RCIR Halal menu number one review. Uh, it's been a while since uh, we've done a review, partly due to the fact that uh, there was a, a bout of bronchitis that lasted for about a month, which uh, sort of took me out of commission. Then Christmas holidays sort of rolled around and all that kind of stuff all mixed in together, so I'm sure it's been, you know, six or seven weeks or something like that, probably since I uh, uh, put out the, the part one. So looking forward to, to finally getting part two done here now and move on to something else. But uh, first, um, part one, we went through a unboxing and the, uh, the breakfast portion of this ration. And now today, we're going to go through what we have left. So um, as we... Uh, have here, of course, before, as I explained, the menu number one. What we're going to have left today is uh, our halal beef lasagna, some tuna fish and potatoes, some sardines, and then a bunch of various other sort of snacks and sides and whatnot. Just to explain once again that uh, halal rations are uh, used throughout the world for soldiers which are Muslim. Uh, so the, uh, the main meal we have here, as it says, halal beef lasagna, that means that the um, the beef in that main has been prepared uh, in a way which adheres to Muslim dietary law. So it's it's considered halal or permissible, uh, sort of similar to what uh, kosher would be for those who are uh, who are Jewish. So what we're going to do is I'm going to basically set everything up, show what we're going to have for, uh, for this meal. We're going to have a bunch of it all together instead of drawing this out into three parts. And, uh, yeah, be back in one second. All right, so we got everything laid out now that we're going to have uh, for our uh, main meal today. Uh, there's a couple items that aren't pictured here, which I'm going to forego. Uh, not going to have the coffee or the, uh, the hot cocoa. Uh, I don't drink coffee anyway, so that just usually goes into an accessory bag. And uh, I've already got a green tea and your isotonic drink there, so I don't sort of feel the need to have three drinks, so we're going to forego the coffee as well, and we're not going to use the Esbit stove. Find a different way to heat up our main. This particular main here, the uh, tuna with uh, vegetables, or tuna with potatoes, as it says there, um, you can either eat that hot or cold. I've had it once before, hot, and um, it was okay, so I'm going to try it cold today, see if it makes any difference. So the only thing we're going to really have to heat up here, aside from, say, preparing the tea or the soup um, will be just our halal main, our beef lasagna. So um, I think what we, probably what we're going to do is uh, actually just go ahead and start getting that heated up. And while that's doing its thing, we'll sort of unpack some of the other items and get some other things ready and whatnot. So just be back in one second. So while that's heating up, uh, we'll just go through some of the other items we have here. Uh, for snacks, we've got ourselves a little 64% cocoa um, chocolate bar, a fruit nougat bar, a uh, two commando bars, one of which is coffee flavored, the other which is is red berries, best way to put it. Got ourselves a curry soup, a uh, oriental green tea, a green citrus isotonic drink. I uh, got some of these biscuits once again, the salt and the uh, cereal, a can of sardines, and our uh, tuna. We've also got some salt and pepper if need be. Uh, didn't really want to use the little itty bitty spork thing that comes with the uh, Esbit kits. We've got our CR1M shovel and our MRE spoon here. Uh, probably end up using both of them, I suppose. So uh, we'll get the drinks ready first, I suppose. So um, use this for our tea. Just your standard Lipton. Tea bag. We'll get some hot water from the Keurig for that eventually, and we'll use this for our isotonic drink. One thing the French rations are not well known for is, I guess, the quality of their isotonic drinks. They're usually a little bit lacking in flavor. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this one goes. I've never had this particular flavor before, so it'll be interesting to see how it is. The smell coming off of it already is uh, a little, I guess, odd is the weird uh, the word to use. 
yeah, it's got the faintest hint of citrus, but also a kind of like cleaning product kind of smell, which I know probably isn't the best thing to use when you're talking about uh, something you're going to drink, but that's that's what it smells like. And we'll also uh, prepare our soup in a, uh, a glass. Now this is packed incredibly tightly. We'll just mix it up in a, a glass like this. Trying as hard as I can not to make too much of a mess, which can be a, a bit of a job sometimes. So, pour some water in here, give it a bit of a stir, seems to be dissolving pretty well, got a bit of a cloudy kind of hue to it. Smells a little bit better now that it's actually been mixed up, but it's still, still not great. Uh, what we're going to do now is get a little bit of hot water for these, and then we'll come back in one second. And here we've got our tea, and we've got our curry soup. So let's give this a little stir. That uh, curry soup does have a, a lovely smell coming off of it. Kind of an interesting concept for a a ration soup. You don't see curry as a, a flavor for for soups too much. Of course, it's in an awful lot of the uh, the main items, some sort of form of curry with rice and meat and whatnot. But uh, this should be an interesting take on it. And we'll give our tea just a, a little bit of a stir. Activate it a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure how long you're supposed to steep this, so we'll just uh, let it sit for a little bit and and see how it's going. Um, next, I guess we can open up our uh, items that we're going to have for our snacks. So first, we've got our fruit nougat bar. And this is supposed to have pieces of uh, grape and cherry and. Apricot looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of a, a rice paper film there on each side, I guess, to sort of just keep it from sticking too much. Seems to be fairly pliable. We've got our little, not sure what the actual size of this is. Yeah, 25 grams. A little 25 gram chocolate bar. It's appeared to have bloomed a little bit along the way. But it's not too bad. Looks like a nice quality uh, dark chocolate. And then our two commando bars, we got our red fruit. And our coffee flavored. And our main is pretty well heated up, so I'm going to go over and just check that, and then uh, we'll be back. All right, so that's just about ready. Uh, I guess we'll open up our uh, our other main meal, our uh, tuna with potatoes, tuna and vegetables. We're going to eat this one cold, as I said. And the ring pull decided to not work on this. Awesome. Hmm. Okay, gonna have to figure out the uh, best way to open this sensibly without making too much of a mess or slicing my hands open. So uh, we'll be back in one second. All right, that took a little bit of work, but uh, crisis averted. So here we have our uh, tuna with potatoes and of course other vegetables. Looks like we got some zucchini in there and some onion and some uh, red pepper and some green pepper as well and some chunks of tuna. So it actually looks looks fairly good. I found uh, when I heated it the first time I tried this, in the act of heating it, it kind of made everything look like a, a weird kind of mess. It didn't it didn't appear to be appetizing, so um, this looks at least a little bit better as it's cold. So it'll be interesting to see how good it actually is. 
And uh, let's open up our tin of sardines. And this is the one thing I'm, I don't know if apprehensive is the word to use, but uh, I've never actually had sardines before. I'm not a huge seafood fan. So when I opened up the ration and saw that this was one of the items that was in it, I wasn't particularly excited. But uh, for the purposes of the review, of course, try everything that's in there. Unless, of course, it's gone bad or something like that. But, uh, you know, we'll see, see how this goes. Any of you have seen some of my older videos, especially my Slovenian ration review. I had a tin of macaron vegetables that I tried to open very quickly and made a massive mess with it. So a little bit better that time without having a pile of olive oil go flying everywhere. So there's our tin of sardines and olive oil. And we've got our uh, tuna. Actually, I think we'll lay that here. And I'm going to get our main meal now and uh, set that up. And uh, then we're going to start tasting everything. So we got our main here, just using an oven glove just so I don't uh, burn my hands. Cooked it on the stove top. Sort of cut it up in sections and whatnot, let the heat transfer a little bit easier. So we're just going to pour this halal beef lasagna out into the main part of the tray here. Got a little bit burned on, but it actually cooked really well. I'm kind of happy to see how that went. And that is absolutely piping hot. As you can see uh, through the video, all the steam flying off of that. So, we got everything laid out now. I don't know if we're going to actually need the biscuits or not, because technically I don't really know what's here that's, that's going to be uh, necessary for the biscuits. But... Um, Anyway, they're there just in case we wish to try them. Uh, maybe try some of this isotonic drink just first, just to see how it is. Yeah, as as it usually goes for French isotonic drinks, that's just um, it's just weird. It's the only way to put it. Yes, it has a citrus taste, but um, I don't know what particular fruit they're thinking of. But it doesn't have any discernible one particular fruit flavor to me at all it just has a very generic bland faint citrus taste and um, the I guess electrolytes or whatever it is they're using just leaves a really weird aftertaste in your mouth but I mean it's it's a drink you know you're meant to have it such it is uh, let's try some of our mains I guess that's uh, what the main the main thing is here um, got our halal beef lasagna so of course remember this um, this menu is a halal menu. Not particularly common to see these. There's not a whole lot of reviews out there on YouTube of a uh, of a actual halal French RCIR. I think this is the only English one I, I've seen so far. So let's give our actual halal beef lasagna a try here. As you can see, it's like your standard sort of lasagna. You know, you got your layers of noodles and a tomato sauce with actually, you know, nice big chunks of beef. I don't see a whole lot of other veggies in there. Might see a little bit of a mushroom or something like that, but for what it is, it actually looks to be pretty good quality. So let's give it a try. Yeah, that's that's a really good quality lasagna. I mean, for you know, pre-packaged, shelf-stable kind of lasagna. The noodles are a little, they're a little bit mushy. I guess is the word to put it. They're not quite as firm as I'd hoped they'd be. But they're they're still pretty good. The sauce is fairly robust. It's got a you know a nice solid sort of obviously tomato flavor. Not a whole lot of background herbs that I'm sort of picking up a whole lot. Just has that sort of standard generic tomato sauce for pasta kind of kind of flavor. And the beef um, beef tastes tastes great. You know for a a standard pasta meal from a ration. This is um, this is probably as good as it gets actually when it comes to a tomato based thing. When you're used to mainly getting USMRE type pasta meals, where um, just the sort of sauce they use has a, a really odd flavor, you know, Chef Boyardee kind of flavor to it. This this is sort of a step above that. Oh yeah, that's that's really good. Let's give a little bit of a green tea taste, just to try to cleanse the palate a little bit. Ooh. That's a strong, strong oriental green tea. That's a really, it's not bitter, but, you know, 
that flavor really smacks you right away once you take a mouthful of it. If you're used to eating, you know, things like matcha or whatever. It's very reminiscent of that. I don't know what else is in there. For just to call it, you know, oriental green tea. It looked like there was a lot more than just green tea leaves in that in the bag there. But um it's a nice it's a nice thing. I think I'd probably prefer something like a, a black tea, you know, an Earl Grey or an English breakfast or orange pico, that kind of thing. But for what it is, it's uh, it's pretty good. Let's give a give a try of our our cold version of the uh, tomato. I mean, uh, tuna and potatoes. So we'll try to mix those two words there together. So let's try to get a little spoonful here with a little bit of everything. Got our tuna, potatoes, some veggies. This kind of almost looks like a slight tomato-based sauce. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's a lot better cold than it is heated up. I found um, heating it up really brought out the fishiness of the tuna. It's uh, it's still a little bit more fishy than what I'm used to for sort of canned tuna that we would get here. Um, I don't know if that speaks to the quality of this tuna in here. If it's probably of a higher quality, that's why you're getting a little bit more of a fishy flavor to it. But uh, it's very, very nice quality tuna. The potatoes in this sort of cold state, it's nice, a little bit of bite to it, and uh, you're getting that sort of undertone of the tomato-based sauce. Not really picking up much on the flavor of the uh, zucchini or the peppers or the onion or anything, but it's mostly just sort of potato, tuna, and, and tomato sauce kind of thing. Let's just give it a little bit more of a try, and that's surprisingly not bad. It's a little oily, but... Um, can't fault them for that. Um, I mean, it, I'm sure it keeps a bit better in the cans, and also makes it easier for heating up if um, if there's a little bit more of an oil content in there to help all the food from not sticking inside and give a little bit extra calories and fat, and you know, add the flavor content. Next, next we've got the thing I'm not particularly looking forward to. Well, let's give our sardines a try, I guess. So I'll say right now, I've literally never eaten sardines before in my entire life. And um, this is going to be, it's going to be interesting. Just try a little piece. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's surprising, it's uh, almost got kind of a a trout kind of flavor to it. Um, here, mostly if you're going to eat trout, you're going to eat uh, mud trout, which is in the char family. And I haven't eaten a whole lot of that either. I'm not a huge, like I said, not a huge seafood fan. But this is uh, very similar to that in, in flavor. It's not as fishy as something like, say, mackerel would be. Uh, but it's got a nice deep seafood flavor. Like I said, very akin to something like uh, something like trout. It's not it's not bad. With that said, I'm not gonna want to eat a whole lot of it. Like a, my grandfather would say, I uh, I wouldn't want to be tied to it. Um, you know, it's okay to to try. It's certainly isn't something I wouldn't be looking for in a uh, in a ration if I was gonna pick one up and say, oh yeah, great, there's there's sardines in this, awesome. But it's interesting that they you know added in there for uh, I guess you're a little bit of extra protein. Something like that. It, it seems that when you see a lot of reviews of the French rations, um, this seems to be in the place of one of the desserts, actually. So I don't know if they do that to up the protein content or something like that. It seems kind of interesting why they wouldn't just add a, a dessert or even a can of dates like you would normally see in a, in a French RCIR. But uh, this one has, has sardines and it ended up a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So, so that's good. Let's just uh, cleanse the palate a little bit before we move on to the, uh, the rest of the items we have. So yeah, like I said before, we're probably not going to need the eat the rest of the crackers for anything that's here. Um, all we have left now is our soup and our dessert snacky items, I guess is the way to put it. So first let's give our, our soup a, a try. So remember, this is a, a curry soup. Still got a few little chunks there, but that's okay. Let's just give this a little try. Let's... Give another stir just to be safe. So as you can see, it's sort of like a, a milky yellow 
standard sort of yellow curry kind of kind of look. Take a sip, see how it tastes. I know it's odd to say that a curry soup could be refreshing, but uh, for someone who, who likes curry, uh, as I do, that's an incredibly refreshing curry soup. I've never had curry soup before um, in, well, in that sort of sense. You know, you can have sort of Thai soup that has a bit of a, a curry kind of base to it, but um, it's really interesting to have that. You know, in the French rations, usually you get something like either a, a fish soup or a curry soup or something like that. I've never had the fish one yet, but the um, this curry soup's actually actually really nice. I, I rather enjoy it. Let's uh, try a bit more of the uh, the green tea. See if time elapsing has made it taste a little bit more robust. No, it's still pretty similar. It seems like it's um, the you know the flavor hasn't particularly changed in any way. Um, still a pretty good green tea, like I said, but um, you know, not not the greatest, not the greatest option for a drink for a ration. Um, so what we have left, we got our desserts. So let's just try our fruit nougat first. Like I said, it's got some pieces of grape in there and some apricot and cherry, and it's got this sort of rice paper kind of lining. Take a nice bite. That's a that's a pretty good nougat. It's a fairly dense nougat. Um, it's got a bit of a bite to it. You know, it takes a little bit of extra work to chew through it. You're not going to get a whole lot of discernible flavor from either of the uh, particular fruit that's in there. What you're mostly going to get is that sort of just prevailing sugary vanilla kind of flavor that you would normally get from any sort of, you know, commercial style nougat. Not to say that's a bad thing, but... Um, you know, if you're looking for a nice sort of sweet pick me up, that kind of thing, this is this is great. I, I, I'm someone who enjoys enjoys nougat a fair bit. Let's give a little piece of our uh, our chocolate bar a try. So as we can see, it's a little bit bloomed. It's also got a little bit of just sort of dust on it, I guess, from from age. But it's a nice dark chocolate. Looks like it should be pretty good. Oddly enough, for a, um, a French chocolate, it's um it's a little, it's a little dry actually. It kind of crumbles a bit more than what I had, what I had hoped for. I mean, I know a sixty-four percent dark chocolate's a, a pretty high number, uh, but I mean, I've had dark chocolate from other rations from various other countries around the world, especially European, that um, have a have a chocolate bar of about the same level of this one, and it just seems a lot more creamy than this. This it, it's you know it's a great snap to it. It crunches when you bite it. But then it doesn't dissolve right away, it just kind of crumbles up in your mouth. So the mouthfeel of it's not 100%, but it's still got a fantastic flavor. For those of you who like the flavor of dark chocolate compared to, say, milk, um, it's a it's a lovely tasting chocolate. Just It's it's a little, a little bit dry and crumbly. Um, and lastly, we have our two Commando Bars. So Commando Bar has kind of like, you know, a rice crisp and nougat kind of mix kind of look to it, as you can see from all these little indentations. This is, of course, the coffee-flavored one. Let's give that one a try. As someone who uh, doesn't drink coffee, so doesn't particularly like the smell or taste of coffee when it's in, you know, other items, um, that Commando Bar is not bad. It's a little dry. The, the base to it has a bit of a granular kind of feel to it, and then the added sort of crunch from the... Uh, little crisp rice there doesn't help that either it makes it even even more dry i guess so um it's not it's not great it'll be interesting to see if there's any difference here with the red so let's give that one a try and yeah uh i don't mean to bag on the um the french rations but when it comes to their snacks i think i'd prefer if they just like put more jam in there or something and just more chocolate i find Especially the Commando Bars. The red one is the same thing. It's very dry and granular. You know, the Rice Crisps don't add to that at all. Um, add, I mean, in a positive way. They uh, they add more dryness, um, which isn't a great thing. It's not easy to try to you know keep stifling a cough, basically, as you're eating it. And um, the flavor is... It's really weird. You can't quite put your finger on it. I'd almost call it more of a, a rose hip flavor than any particular sort of red berry like 
strawberry or raspberry or something like that. I don't know what sort of flavor they're going for there, but it didn't t taste particularly like a, a berry to me, I guess. So, um, all in all, their snacks, I, I find they're not, they're not great. The dessert items, not great, but, um, in a pinch, of course, they're, they're not bad. I think I, I guess I'd rather this than a pack of Skittles or something, but, um, such as it is. So guys, this has been uh, part two, the uh, final part of my review of this uh, menu number one, Halal, RCIR. Not a particularly common ration to find. The majority of the items have actually been, been pretty good, the mains especially, the, the beef lasagna was fantastic, uh, this tuna and potatoes and vegetables, it was a lot better than it had been the pr previous time I'd had it. Even the sardines surprised me in, in that they were, you know, edible and I didn't sort of gag as I was eating them, because, you know, you never know how that's going to go. Uh, the isotonic drinks are, as they usually are, not the greatest. That curry soup is fantastic. Desserts, I don't need to go into that any, any further. And didn't really need to use the uh, the crackers anymore. So, uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, stopping by and watching the uh, second part of this. I'll hopefully move on to um, a different ration sometime soon in the future. don't know exactly what it is I'm going to do. Probably some sort of single meal thing instead of going with these multi-part 24-hour rations. Uh, I do have now in my possession a uh, a brown bag USMRE from my uh, my year of birth, 1984. So I'm looking forward to maybe trying that one out next. So um, thanks a lot. Have a good one.